Hello. Hello, may I please speak to Derek? Yeah, this is him. Hey, Derek, it's Dave Lawrence at 105.9 The Big Kahuna in Honolulu. How you doing, man? How you doing? Good, how are you, man? I'm very good. Excellent. Are, uh, is this a good time for... for oh, yeah, this, this is fun. Perfect. So, uh, I thought I lost you for a minute. We're over 6,000 miles away, so hopefully, I hear you. <laughs> hopefully the signal will stay on track. Uh, I used to work in Boston for a long, long time at WZLX. Yeah, your name sounds familiar. Yeah, I met you. You probably recognize it. I mean, I didn't know you or anything well, but I met you a bunch of times, and I saw you when you were a little kid opening up for Colonel Bruce, which I have oh, to... Wow, the paradise yeah yeah Very <laughs> when, cool. when the sg was was taller than you were <laughs> <laughs> yeah i finally outgrew it yeah you did and uh <laughs> congrats on all your success and you're also hooked up with a with a chick from my old neighborhood yeah that's right yeah. norwell's own the only time i ever met her uh she was with a friend of mine at a george clinton concert if you can believe that so that's funny yeah in boston too so joining me right now in this very special workforce box at noon is the fine musician appearing tomorrow night on maui at the arts and cultural center in Kahului, 242 show for tickets for that one. Friday, he's in town here at the Hawaiian Hut, 941-5205 for tickets to the Honolulu show. We are pleased to welcome Allman Brothers Band guitarist and leader of his own band, Derek Trucks, to the air here on 105.9. Hey, Derek. Hey, how you doing, man? Very good. Thanks for taking the time. Yeah, man. So congrats on both your excellent Derek Trucks Band CD, Joyful Noise, and also on this new Allman Brothers Band album. Yeah, those records popping out everywhere. <laughs> You're just showing up on on different records and you got the tour yeah man it's, it's been going really well we, we've been uh, really lucky to uh, to be working and recording records we have uh, Joyful Noise just came out we have another one coming out in July called Soul Serenade and uh, we just recorded with Bela Flex so we have a bunch bunch of records coming out here in the next few months nice Bela was a guest on the show a few months back when he was he's a good town. guy yeah he is he's a really good guy when did Joyful Noise get released uh, that was September right of last year right yeah I thought it's been out for a little while now and you said the next one Soul Serenade what'd you say it was yeah Soul Serenade that's coming out in um July, I believe. Little almonds reference there? Uh, yeah, King Curtis. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. That's right, King Curtis. That was a cover that they had yeah, done. Yeah, it, it was a King Curtis tune that uh, Aretha covered, and I think the Almond Brothers might have played it a few times along the way. Yeah, I think it's on the box set, actually, as I might oh, recall. Oh, is it? Yeah. I'll have to check that out. <laughs> yeah, I think there's a live version from right around when the, when the funeral happened. Yeah, that's right. That's right. As, as I recall the introduction on the cut. So tell me about doing this uh, last Almond Brothers band album. That was your first chance to go in the studio and do something with them. Yeah, they hadn't been in the studio in, I guess, close to 10 years. So uh, that's the first time I got a chance to head in the studio with them. It was, uh, it was great, man. We've, we've really finished the bulk of the album in like 8 to 10 days. So, you know, everyone was really on their best behavior and <laughs> everyone was playing well. So it was... Uh, it was a good time. Now, you got into the band, it was, was it like spring 99 you got the call? Yeah, I think the first show was uh, sometime in June of uh, 99, so I probably got the call in spring and did some rehearsals. And so when you joined, it was... It was me and Dickie, and then me and Jimmy Herring, and now me and Warren Haynes. Okay, so at first it was you and Dickie, then it was yeah. you and Jimmy Herring. Yeah. Then it, Now it's, it's you and Warren Haynes. Yep. Wow, that's an exciting lineup of guys, man. Yeah, man, it's forever changing in that group but <laughs> i hope i hope we're done with the guitar rotating guitar chair <laughs> and who was that other cat who was there for a few years right after warren left um that was uh, jack pearson jack pearson right right yeah, that's great the player. Dude. yeah he was he was cool it does seem to, to have collaced with a almost like a new generation of the band and you got o'teal in the band as well yeah man it's it's amazing playing with o'teal he's such a such an amazing musician. Um, Kofi, his older brother, is uh, is in our band. He's the keyboardist in your band, right? Yeah, so that, that's a talented family of musicians. Yes, sir, and and, and bass player and the brother's a, f a fine young man. He is. He sounds amazing with the group. Yeah, he, he's one of the one of the better electric bass players on planet Earth right now. That's for sure. I would say so. Definitely in our solar system for sure too. <laughs> uh, and I don't want to embarrass you, but on the O'Teal tip, I, I have to tell folks the first time that I ever saw you play, you were. Uh, uh, you were opening for O'Teal, correct? You were, it was the yeah. spring of 1991, and you were opening for Colonel Bruce Hampton, and he was the bassist for them. And I remember your SG was bigger than you at the time. <laughs> I'm sure it was. I, <laughs> I guess I must have been 12 or 13. Yeah, as time. I was going to ask you, you're 12 or 13 then, huh? Yeah, somewhere there. When did you start flying, Derek? I was on the road. Um, I started playing and started gigging around at nine years old. You first picked up the instrument at nine or had already been messing around with it? No, I got my first instrument at nine and then had a guitar teacher for, for a few months and then I started sitting in with him and then local bands, local blues bands around Jacksonville and then um, went on tour with them. I think I was nine and we played the Toronto uh, Jazz and Blues Festival. So that, that's the first, uh, 
real away from home gig I think I ever had. Man, oh man. So starting at nine and then by twelve, you were just burning out on tour. <laughs> yeah, man. It's it's been a long, long, crazy road. <laughs> what got you into it in the beginning? I mean, aside from being the nephew of Almond's drummer Butch Trucks. Just listening. Um, I I think uh, I got a, a guitar to garage sale really on a whim. I, I don't think I had much of a desire to play. Um, it was just kind of out of the blue, and once I started doing it, it felt really natural, and it it seemed like a uh, seemed like the thing to do. You know, at, at nine and ten years old, you really don't put too much thought into it. You just, if you enjoy it, you do it. If you know, if not, you uh, you go back and play baseball or whatever whatever else I was doing <laughs> at the time. So <laughs> it was a natural thing. I was, I was thing. trying to balance the two, maybe. <laughs> and and was it uh, in guitar? That was the one instrument you went right to. Yeah, that's that's what I started with, and I was listening to a lot of uh, Elmore James and and Dwayne the. Those were the two slide players that I really gravitated towards in the beginning. Well, you, your slide work is frequently mentioned in the same context with Dwayne uh, Allman's work. When, when people compare you to him, what's your reaction to that? Well, I mean, it, it's, a, it's a compliment in the fact that, you know, he was my first influence. His sound is definitely going to come through what I do. And, you know, to be compared to, uh, you know, one of your first influences is always a compliment. But, on, you know, on the other hand, you, you kind of want to have your own identity and you want his thing to be his thing and then you want to kind of carry it forward and uh and kind of be the next the next step in the musical evolution so you know i i think uh i think your first influence always sticks with you though and i i think people always uh they always hear where you're coming from that way. Sometimes when uh, I've only seen you with the brothers a handful of times, but I have been lucky enough to see you uh, with them. And I saw you when, when Jimmy Herring was in the band, and then I did see you with, with Warren. And the thing that I always find interesting about this era of the brothers is when you're up there soloing, Greg will have this, this look on his face. He's like staring at you with this, this uh, an expression that just, I don't know if words can properly describe <laughs> it. It's like a combination of awe, nostalgia... Um, I don't know quite what's running through his mind, but he he has this the this the most interesting expression on his face while you're soloing. That's wild. I mean, you know, when I'm playing, I'm I'm uh, looking down at the ground or nowhere at all. So <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen it, but that's right. funny to hear. You're usually a finger picking, correct? Yeah, I, I don't mess with a pick. Right, you never use a pick. Mm -mm. Wow, yeah. And he's uh, that's, that's what I always seem to recall is, is standing there, and I'd usually be, like be right behind the monitor board, so I'd have a pretty good view. You know, looking right across to him, you know, he'd be staring my way, and you'd be there, and he would just, you know, you would never pay attention to him, but he would be looking at you, you know, with this <laughs> intense expression. So I have to give him a hard time when I see him. <laughs> yeah, you know, it was just, it was something that was pointed out by, by a friend of mine at the time. That's funny. Um, what's your relationship with, with Dickie like? Um, really positive, man. I talk to him often. I just saw him, uh, we just played the New Orleans Jazz Festival. After our show, I went out to Tipitina's and, uh, he was playing with the North Mississippi All Stars, so I went and sat in with them and hung with Dickie for a few hours. Um, I just saw him in Costa Rica. Me and Jimmy Herring and Taj Mahal and Dickie Betts went to Costa Rica for this uh, pseudo celebrity fishing tournament kind of oh, thing. Oh wow! <laughs> but it was fun, man, getting to hang with him and Taj and Jimmy on a boat was uh, an amazing time. But uh, you know, I see Dickie often. So all you guys were out there together at once. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we were there for like four days. So it was me and Dickie one day, me and Jimmy one day, and then me and Taj one day. Damn, what were you catching? A lot of sailfish and some rooster fish. Wow, man. Yeah, it was it was a great time, man. It's beautiful down there. So you got a good rapport with Dickie, and he and he, and does he does he ever ask you questions about like what it's like in the brothers these days, or you know, rarely he'll uh, really gracefully approach the the subject. I can <laughs> tell he doesn't want to stir anything up but you know he, he knows with me i'm i'm completely open and, and neutral with him so he you know if, if he wants to know something i'll i'll tell him <laughs> but it, it's great man he was he was always great with me i mean with a situation like that it's a, like a 32 year marriage with four other guys so <laughs> things happen sure you know I, I had been in the band with him for a year and a half so we didn't have time to uh to get into anything <laughs> <laughs> How did your relationship with him change after he left the group? Not much. I, I mean, if anything, uh, maybe it got a little stronger because I, I think he was uh, maybe alienated from the other guys, and you know, and I, I wasn't quite in that camp. So uh, you know, he would call, and you know, we stayed in touch. You know, he's gone as far as like playing our record, Joyful Noise, between his sets and before his shows, nice. and, uh, and you know, telling the people that come out to see him that you need to pick up the record. You know, he's been. And I heard about this completely independent of him telling me, you know. So he's, you know, he's been great, man. I, he's uh, 
to me, he's always been great. That's cool, man. That's cool that he's so supportive. I'm sure he's real proud of you. Yeah, it's nice, man. It's it's great that he uh, <clears throat> he sees the difference between uh, you know what went down in that situation and then you know his friends. So yeah, no, it's valuable when when you can salvage what you need to out of a relationship like yeah, that. Yeah, man. I know uh, something else kind of interesting about you that maybe everyone listening doesn't, and that is uh, you're married to a blues musician, Susan Tedeschi, mm -hmm. who is uh, I actually had the the pleasure of running into and meeting many many years ago. It was the summer of 1996, and she was at a George Clinton show <laughs> with a good cool. friend of mine named Greg Latrell, and uh, it was right during the middle of the concert, and I just bumped into him out getting drinks or something, and I remember distinctly being introduced to her, because she was already like, you know, a well-known local musician at the time. Uh-huh, that's funny. Yeah. I'll have to ask her about the George Clinton <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that was when he had the mothership and stuff. It was pretty wild. <laughs> That's awesome. Of all the superstars that you've gotten to jam with, Derek, and you've really played with some, some outrageous people, I have here on this little list, you, you have played with the following people, right? Elvin Jones, Phil Lesh, Buddy Guy, Bob Dylan? Yeah, um, Elvin's actually a few months in the future. You haven't that, done that? No, we're going to record a session with him, but that that's pretty much uh, on the book. But, uh, yeah, the rest of them I've, I've played with already. How'd you manage to get up there with Dylan? Was that on the Phil tour? Or? You know, that was, I guess I was about 11 years old, and we opened, <laughs> like, I think we opened two or three shows for Bob Dylan, and on the last show he came up and, uh, and you know, asked if I wanted to sit in, and uh, that was amazing. I, th I think it was more of a trip for my father at the time, because, you know, at 11 I kind of knew who he was, but not really. Right. But, you know, my father's generation, you know, he was the voice of the generation. Yeah. And, you know, it was I could I could see him kind of shaking a little bit. It was funny. <laughs> and what did you play, may I ask? I played uh, Highway 61 and Everything Is Broken. <laughs> Man, that is so outrageous. 11 years old and jamming with Bob Dylan. Yeah, it was a trip. I wish there was pictures. I wish I had a picture of that one. <laughs> that is something else, man. And and of all of the different stars that you've had to that you've had the pleasure and the and the honor of sharing the stage with, who do you think was the most memorable, Derek? You know, it's so hard to say when when you get a chance to. Uh, to play with you know legends like that or uh, Les Paul we got to play with oh man and, uh, but John Lee Hooker really sticks out we did New Year's 2000 with him and uh, me and Susan got to get on stage and sit in right it's, together uh, the, yeah the New Year was rolling around so that was uh, that one's pretty memorable you and your wife bringing yeah. in the New Year with John Lee Hooker yeah in San Francisco <laughs> it, was, it was pretty memorable we actually had like our highest paying show ever in Telluride that night and then we got a call for no money to open for John Lee Hooker, and I was like, no question, <laughs> we're going to play with Hooker. <laughs> for sure. Was that at his club, the Boom Boom Club or whatever? <clears throat> yeah, it was actually, um, we played the Maritime Music Hall, but he has his club there, and uh, he used to hang out there. But, it, you know, one of those situations where you knew he was, you know, up there in age, he was 82 years old, so, you know, you get a chance to see someone like that, you got to jump at it. you got to take it while you can, man. <laughs> I got to see him and Eddie James on the same bill once, and I will always treasure the memory. Yeah, man, he, he's as heavy as any of them. Who would you say, if you were to list two or three of your all-time favorite guitarists, now that you're, you know, you're, you're a little older, you've been doing a whole lot of work, you've, you've really jammed with a variety of musicians, who, who would be the, th the, the handful of guys who you think were your, your all-time favorites? Um, it'd be hard to narrow it down to three, but I could get it down to, like, eight. There you go. <laughs> But you know Charlie Christian was he's you know the first first electric guitar soloist and I uh, named our son after him Charlie Christian was amazing um Django Reinhardt Wes Montgomery um for me Dwayne Amon was a huge influence you know Sunhouse Booker White the early Delta Cats um there's so many the Three Kings Albert Freddie and and BB you know <laughs> there's the list could go for, for miles, though. Hubert Sumlin, Wayne Bennett. <laughs> yeah, we had B.B. out here not that long ago. He did a show and uh, was, a, was a guest here. Also, we had John Mayle through the area not that long ago. You like him? Yeah, man. We've done some shows with him along the way. Um, you know, someone like B.B., though, it's just it's amazing. He's like a force of nature, you know. He can take one note and just make you cry with it. He's, he's a master. It's very humbling being around him, absolutely. Yeah, man, he's one of the most generous human beings you'll ever meet. Yeah. When, when you meet someone that actually grew up on a plantation, <laughs> you know, and actually left the farm in Mississippi, it's, you know, that's a different trip, man. Those guys, uh, they have a different take on life. They, they know the difference between real work and uh, just being tired from being on the road, you know. <laughs> you aren't kidding, man. When you see guys like that, I, I realize that uh, 
complaining is not an option. <laughs> and he's so humble and yeah, so man, accessible. He's a beautiful human being. He's like Santa Claus. <laughs> totally, totally like Santa. I mean, he's so welcoming, so warm, so friendly, so accommodating to everyone who wants to talk to him. Yeah, BB something else. A couple more questions, I'll let you go. Derek, have you ever played Hawaii before? No, man, first time there. We, everyone is thrilled. You know, have you ever even been to the state? No, I don't think anyone in the band has, so wow. we're, we're all looking forward to it. Yeah, well, damn, well, we're really looking forward to you guys coming. Then. That's yeah. gonna be cool, dude. <laughs> we gotta, we gotta hang. Yeah. Well, you gotta come by. Yeah, man. We'll be around. You definitely gotta come by. And finally, Derek, uh, this is a really important thing too. Don't want you to forget about this. Last <laughs> but certainly not least, we want to bring the Almond Brothers here for a show. Okay. Right. And we know bands come here. Bands can make it happen. The Stones have played here. The Police. All kinds of bands. You know. And Journey was just here recently. Uh, we want you to lean on Bert Holman, the awesome manager of the Allman Brothers, <laughs> and let's get you guys out here. Deal? I'll put in the word, man. I'll give it a shot. I'll, anytime I can, uh, I can get that far away from the mainland, I'm down, man. That's amazing. <laughs> 2,000 miles away. I will let as many of you crash at my place as I can fit <laughs> on my floor. <laughs> Deal. Me and, me and O'Teal and Mark will come over, man. <laughs> yeah, I'd love it, man. You'll dig my CD collection and the view. <laughs> nice. <laughs> well, Derek, I really do appreciate it. Uh, everyone Thanks out there guys, listening, man. remember tomorrow in Kahului at the Arts and Cultural Center, 242 Show, and then here at the Hawaiian Hut, Friday, 941-5205, the Derek Trucks Band. We have that information for you here in the studio. I will see you at the show. 105.9, the Big Kahuna. Thanks you so much, Derek. Cool, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, I really do appreciate getting getting a few minutes of your time here. Likewise. Oh, great, man. Cool. Hi, this is Derek Trucks of the Almond Brothers Band, and you're listening to 105.9, the Big Kahuna with our friend Dave Lawrence.